Welcome back to the Gentleman's Gazette. In today's video, we'll be discussing the houndstooth pattern in menswear, its history and uses, and how to wear and pair it well. So first, let's answer the simple question, what is houndstooth? In the most general terms, houndstooth is a type of checked pattern. As a reminder, a check is a type of pattern that's created from the intersection of horizontal and vertical lines on a garment, which creates small squares. Sometimes you can also see something called an overcheck, which is basically a larger scale pattern that's complementing the smaller check at the same time. For more information on different kinds of check patterns, including houndstooth, you can check out our comprehensive article on check patterns in menswear here. In more specific terms, houndstooth is a symmetrical, multicolored, broken check pattern that's formed by the overall weave structure of the garment. Houndstooth can be distinguished from other similar types of check patterns by its jagged edges, which are formed by tangent twill lines that flare out from the sides of the squares. It's called houndstooth because some people see these jagged edges as resembling the back teeth of a dog. Houndstooth was historically woven only from wool, but today you'll see it on cotton, corduroy, fleece, and even some synthetic fabrics. Traditional houndstooth check is small in scale and usually found in muted tones of either brown and black. More modern houndstooth styles can include brighter or flashier colors and also larger scale patterns. For example, the jacket I'm wearing today definitely incorporates some tones of brown and black, but you'll also see green, blue, and a little bit of teal as well. Traditional uses for houndstooth, as well as several other check patterns, include all different kinds of tailored garments, such as jackets, vests, trousers, hats, ties, scarves, or even bags and luggage. More trendy uses that you might see today include houndstooth fabric on shoes, as well as t-shirts, other casual apparel, and even some home decor items like bedding. Here are a few notes on terminology that you might encounter with houndstooth. First of all, the plural form, especially if we're talking about different garments, is houndstooths, not houndsteeth. Similar terms include dog tooth or dog's tooth, primarily in British usage. And in French, you'll see the phrases pied de poule, which means hen's foot, or pied de coq, which means rooster's foot for slightly larger patterns. If we're talking about a particularly small hound's tooth pattern, again in English usage, you may also see the term puppy tooth used. We'll talk about that a little bit later when we get to hound's tooth on different kinds of garments. Hound's tooth is available in many different color combinations and it's a classic pattern, but it might not necessarily be everybody's cup of tea. It can be a bit of a busy pattern, and for that reason you do have to be somewhat careful when combining it with other garments, especially in different colors, patterns, or textures. We'll get into how to do that well later on in the video. As houndstooth was traditionally a pattern for tweed fabrics, here's a brief refresher on tweed. Tweed was originally a solely hand-woven fabric. The threads were rough and felted, and the colors were muted and earthy, usually in browns or greens, for example. Tweed, in particular, was the gentleman's sporting fabric of the 19th and early 20th centuries. Phrased another way, it was sort of the performance fabric of its time, almost akin to something like Under Armour now. The English gentry of this time period quickly adopted tweed as the go-to outdoor fabric for their country estates. Also, because it was a fairly effective form of camouflage against the rolling hills of Scotland and England, it was used for all different kinds of outdoor activities, including hunting and fishing. Also, early golfers, for example, people like old Tom Morris, wore all kinds of houndstooth and other tweed when they were on the links. Of course, tweed fabric is very rarely used for sporting events these days, except for a few specific events, like, for example, the Tweed Run. If you'd like to learn more about the illustrious history of tweed, you can check out our previous video here, and also its companion article here.
Before we move on to how to wear houndstooth well, here's a brief discussion of a very closely related pattern that you might sometimes see grouped in with houndstooth. It's called shepherd's check. When houndstooth is woven at particular sizes, usually something like six yarns by six yarns or larger, and in colors like brown and white or black and white, it can therefore classify as a shepherd's check. As you might imagine, shepherd's check is a pattern named after the simple plaids that were worn by herders working in the hills between Scotland and England. This pattern was frequently on large, warm cloaks that they wore, and they would use these cloaks not only to keep warm from the wind and weather, but they would also sometimes even carry newborn lambs in these cloaks. Because the pattern became so closely identified with shepherds, we still know it today as the shepherd's check. Just like houndstooth, shepherd's check is another popular pattern for sturdy tweeds, although it's comparatively a rustic pattern, whereas houndstooth is a bit more versatile. Also like houndstooth, shepherd's check can still come in a variety of sizes and color combinations. And one linguistic note here, shepherd's check is also known as pepita check. If it's a bit smaller, this is exclusively in German-speaking countries. All right, now that we've established everything you need to know about the history and linguistics surrounding houndstooth, let's talk about how to wear and pair it well in your outfits. On the whole, houndstooth, as well as pretty much any other kind of traditional tweed pattern you'll see, is fairly underrated. Tweed has a multitude of different color, texture, and weaving options, and you can get much more variety by using it in your outfits than you could with just a standard plain wool. Given its heritage, houndstooth is an ideal choice for autumn and winter, and various activities you might participate in during those times. Take, for example, cold weather golfing, trout fishing, or bird hunting. On the opposite end of the spectrum, houndstooth, as well as other tweed patterns, are not ideally suited for traditional white-collar business scenarios. These patterns are a little too rustic and a little too informal. For a more in-depth guide at different dress codes, you can check out our article here, and you can also check out our video on different business casual dress codes here. Now, as far as specific garments are concerned, let's first talk about the most common garment to feature a houndstooth pattern, the sport coat. Our founder, Sven Raphael Schneider, has many different tweed coats, several of them in houndstooth. Because of their variations in color, pattern, and texture, they're very versatile, fun, and easy to wear. You could even own up to 30 of them and still probably have room for more in your closet. Also, vintage jackets featuring a houndstooth pattern are fairly easy to find. Because vintage jackets using this pattern were often woven from sturdy wool tweed, they were built to last, so you can still find all kinds of them in various locations, including thrift stores or second-hand stores, or perhaps even online. Here are some details we would recommend for a well-styled houndstooth jacket. We would go for a single-breasted jacket featuring either two buttons or a three-roll-two button stance. Also, we would recommend colors including brown, green, beige, or some reds, or alternatively, you could also go for grayscale or even some muted blues. Of course, there are other jackets that incorporate combinations of these colors, such as the one I'm wearing here today. Though we usually discourage single vents on the backs of jackets, they're a perfectly acceptable choice for houndstooth given the sporting heritage of the garments. Of course, you can also go with a double vent. Also because of the informal nature of traditional houndstooth jackets, patch pockets are a particularly smart choice. You can also see flat pockets as well. Houndstooth pairs particularly well with textures in an outfit. Take, for example, a knit tie, or even another type of tweed, such as the waistcoat I'm wearing here today. On that note, you can also see a houndstooth pattern used on an odd waistcoat. If you wear one of these, it's probably best not to wear it with a similar but not the same houndstooth jacket, just because they'd clash and wouldn't be harmonious. Now, speaking of vests and jackets that feature the same houndstooth pattern, that brings us into our next type of houndstooth garment, the full houndstooth suit. 
Although houndstooth suits aren't necessarily as common as some other pattern types of suits that you'll see today, they do of course exist. In fact, you've seen Raphael wear a few different houndstooth suits on the channel before. Of course, what this means is that the jacket, vest, and trousers all feature exactly the same houndstooth pattern because they were cut from the same cloth. If you do choose to wear a houndstooth suit, a small, subtle check would be the more versatile option. If you were to try to wear a full houndstooth suit featuring a larger style houndstooth check, it would verge on looking like period dress or costume wear. Go for something smaller and you'll look more distinguished. Next, let's talk about houndstooth in shirts. Most typically for dress shirts, you'll see a very small houndstooth pattern. This is where the term puppy tooth again comes in. Often this pattern is just in one color and white. Now on more informal shirts, you'll sometimes see a larger scale houndstooth check and it can also be in multiple colors. This would be for a more casual style shirt, usually in something like a slightly thicker cotton flannel. As far as houndstooth in neckwear is concerned, houndstooth ties are a traditional and still popular option. You'll see houndstooth on neckties in printed silk, which is usually smoother, as well as woven burette fabric, which has a little bit more texture to it. Burgundy is a classic color for a houndstooth necktie, as is navy, and for that reason many men will choose one of these two colors first. Also, if you happen to wear a lot of brown tweed, a beige houndstooth tie could be a particularly smart choice. Houndstooth is also a popular pattern for bow ties. We have a wide selection of houndstooth ties, both long ties and bow ties, in our shop, which you can check out here. Now, if you're wearing a houndstooth jacket, it's probably best not to also be wearing a houndstooth tie. If that's the case, here are a few tie patterns you would be well suited to be wearing instead. You could wear a Prince of Wales pattern tie in a somewhat large pattern in a color such as gray or navy. Also, you could be wearing a tie with a Macclesfield Neats pattern or a similar sort of micro pattern. Of course, going with a solid color necktie here, perhaps a knit tie to provide just a little bit of texture, is always a safe and distinguished choice. For pocket squares, the same rules generally apply as for neckwear. A houndstooth pocket square in silk can add a pop of color and interest to an otherwise more muted jacket, and if you're wearing a houndstooth jacket, go for a more simple pocket square in silk or in a slightly more textured fabric. As far as hats are concerned, flat caps are a traditional choice that still remain equally stylish today. You'll see flat caps in all different kinds of tweed patterns, including houndstooth. For a more in-depth guide on this classic topper, you can check out our flat cap video here. Next, let's talk about shoes. While shoes will very rarely feature a houndstooth pattern directly on them, here are a few tips for how to pair shoes well with other houndstooth garments. As we've said in the past, brown is the most versatile color for outfits consisting of a combination of sport coat and odd trousers. Oxfords, Darbys, and loafers are all acceptable in various shades of brown for these kinds of outfits. For a slightly more modern shoe style, monk straps or suede shoes, still usually in varying shades of brown, can also look particularly smart. Conversely, black shoes are much more risky to wear with these kinds of outfits. You can still get away with a more informal type of black shoe, such as a horse bit loafer, and these will look best if the houndstooth you're wearing is in a grayscale pattern. You can pull off houndstooth with black shoes, but you have to exercise a little bit more caution. Now, you may see particularly modern styles of shoes or boots that have fabric inserts. In these cases, you could actually see a houndstooth pattern on the footwear itself. Finally here, let's talk about boutonnieres. We're big fans of boutonnieres here at the Gentleman's Gazette because they add that special touch of sprezzatura in a way that you don't see many men doing these days. Of course, we have a wide selection of boutonnieres available at the Fort Belvedere shop, which you can check out here. 
Generally, when wearing a boutonniere with a houndstooth jacket, you should go for something smaller and more subdued, because you don't want a large flower clashing with the already bold nature of the houndstooth pattern. So, in conclusion then, houndstooth is a very versatile pattern. It's equally at home in the Scottish Highlands or in a business casual office environment. If worn and paired tastefully with other items, it can look unique but not too flashy. Overall, it's really a pattern that you can sink your teeth into if you know how to wear it well. How do you like to wear houndstooth? Share with us in the comments below. Also, one more reminder to check out our video and article on the history of tweed here. And as always, don't forget to subscribe to the channel so videos like these come straight to your inbox. In today's video, it should be obvious that I'm wearing a houndstooth sport coat. It's a wool silk blend, and it features multiple colors, specifically brown, beige, black, teal, and green. The vest, which is vintage wool tweed, complements the jacket in that it features lighter shades of blue, green, and teal in the fabric as well as in the green buttons. I'm wearing an off-white shirt from Charles Tirrett. I chose off-white today because it would complement the brown tones in the outfit a little bit better than a plain white dress shirt would. My trousers and my socks are both plain black, and my shoes are black cap-toe darbies. Now, we talked in the video about how it's more difficult to pull off black shoes with houndstooth because black is, by nature, more formal. And while this is true of the shoes I'm wearing today, I think that given the monochromatic nature of the entire bottom half of the outfit, as well as the fact that there's black in the sport coat, I can get away with it overall without it clashing too much. The vintage bow tie from Brooks Brothers is green and features small blue paisleys. Because these are both colors found in the jacket, everything works harmoniously, and the paisleys are small and well-spaced, so they don't clash with the size of the pattern of the houndstooth. The remainder of my accessories today are all from Fort Belvedere. Let's start with the cufflinks, which are gold-plated sterling silver in an eagle claw design featuring tiger's eye as the stone. The boutonniere is a small, light blue Veronica Persica, and I wore it because it's particularly understated, so there's really no chance of it clashing with the houndstooth pattern of the sport coat. The pocket square is a light brown linen, and it features a light blue X stitch. You can find all of these accessories in the Fort Belvedere shop here. <laughs> Thank you.